This brief announcement is about extension-based proofs and their limitations. I am Faith Ellen, and this is joint work with Dan Alistar, Jim Asmanis, Rati Gelashvili, and Lecky Zhu. Consensus is one of the most widely studied problems in the theory of distributed computing. In this problem, each process has an input value. All processes that do not crash must output the same value within a finite number of steps, and this output value must be the input value of at least one process. It is well known that there is no weight-free algorithm for solving consensus in asynchronous shared memory systems where processes communicate using registers. The proof uses a valency argument, the technique that Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson introduced in 1983 to prove that consensus cannot be solved in asynchronous message passing systems where even one process can crash. Given an algorithm that purports to solve consensus, one first proves that it has an initial configuration that is bivalent. This means there is an execution from the configuration in which some process outputs 0, and another execution from this configuration in which some process outputs 1. Then one shows that, from every bivalent configuration, there is a step by some process that results in a bivalent configuration. This implies that the algorithm has an infinite execution, and hence the algorithm is not weight-free. K-set agreement is a generalization of consensus. Instead of all outputs having to be the same, up to k different values can be output. When k is equal to 1, this problem is the same as the consensus problem. K-set agreement is also impossible in an asynchronous system with more than k processes that communicate using registers. The first proofs of this result came many years later and all used some form of argument from combinatorial topology. A natural question is whether there are simpler proofs of this result. We formalized this question by defining the class of extension-based proofs, which contain valency arguments. Then we proved that there is no extension-based proof of the impossibility of k-set agreement when k is at least 2 and n is greater than k. An extension-based proof is a game between a prover and an algorithm, which the prover is trying to show is incorrect. The prover repeatedly asks queries, and the algorithm responds to them. The prover's queries can be chosen adaptively based on the responses it gets from the algorithm. Initially, the prover only knows the initial configuration of the algorithm. The prover may repeatedly query the algorithm by choosing a configuration C knows and a process P that hasn't yet halted in C. The algorithm responds with what happens when P takes one step starting from C. In particular, it gives the new value of the object P accessed, P's new state, and what value P outputs if it outputs a value in its new state. The prover wins by showing that the algorithm is incorrect. One way the prover wins is if the algorithm responds with more than k different outputs in a configuration, violating agreement. Another way is if the algorithm responds with an output x in a configuration that was reached from an initial configuration in which no process had x as its input, violating validity. A chain of queries is a sequence of queries where the resulting configuration of one query is the input configuration to the next query in the sequence. A third way the prover can win is if the algorithm allows it to continue a chain of queries indefinitely, violating weight freedom. It is possible to make a valency proof, such as the one for consensus, fit into this framework, but it is a bit cumbersome. Instead, we'll add one more type of query. For an output query, the prover chooses a configuration C that it knows, a set of processes P, and a possible output value Y. The algorithm can respond with a finite sequence of steps by processes in P, such that starting from C, one of them outputs the value Y. Alternatively, it can say that no such sequence exists. For example, if P is the set of all processes, then the output query C, P, 0 says whether there is an execution starting from C in which the value 0 is output. Likewise, the output query C, P, 1 says whether there is an execution starting from C in which the value 1 is output. These two queries tell the prover whether the configuration C is bivalent. After making finitely many output queries and chains of queries without winning, the prover must choose a configuration C it knows and start phase 2. Phase 2 is the same as phase 1, except the prover can only ask queries about configurations that are reachable from C. If the prover doesn't win in phase 2, it must eventually choose another configuration. In other words, at the end of phase 2, the prover is committing to an extension of the extension it committed to at the end of phase 1. Then it starts phase 3. This keeps on happening until the prover cannot start a new phase because all the processes have output values and terminated in the configuration it chose. In this case, the prover loses. If the prover asks an infinite chain of queries, or there are an infinite number of phases, the prover has demonstrated that the algorithm is not weight-free. 
For example, a valency proof for the impossibility of consensus shows how to construct an infinite execution of any algorithm that satisfies agreement and validity, demonstrating that it is not weight free. For example, against a trivial algorithm in which no process ever outputs a value, the prover can win by asking any infinite chain of queries. If the prover is given an upper bound on the maximum length of the executions of an algorithm, it can perform a finite number of queries to examine all reachable configurations. Exhaustive search violates the spirit of an extension-based proof, so this is not allowed. Likewise, if a prover does not have to eventually end phase one, it can win against any weight-free algorithm. To prove that k-set agreement is unsolvable using an extension-based proof, a prover must win against every algorithm. In our stock 2019 paper, we proved that there is no extension-based proof of the impossibility of k-set agreement among more than k processes in the non-uniform iterated immediate snapshot model. Since then, we have proved the same result in the non-uniform iterated snapshot model. The proof is similar, but you don't need to know any topology to understand it. One of the main differences is that, instead of considering simplicial complexes, we consider unions of n-vertex cliques where n is the number of processes. In the non-uniform iterated snapshot model, processes communicate using an unbounded sequence of single writer snapshot objects, which each process accesses in order. A process accesses a snapshot object at most twice. The first time it updates its component with its state. The second time it scans the snapshot object and sets its state to the result of the scan. It is called non-uniform since processes can terminate at different rounds. The non-uniform iterated immediate snapshot model is almost the same, except there is a sequence of immediate snapshot objects instead of a sequence of single writer snapshot objects. Each process can only perform a single update scan operation, which updates its component and immediately performs a scan. Note that an immediate snapshot object is non-linearizable. These models are computationally equivalent to the asynchronous shared memory model where processes communicate by reading from and writing to shared registers. By this, I mean any task that can be solved by a weight-free algorithm in one of these models can be solved by a weight-free algorithm in the other two. The non-uniform iterated immediate snapshot model was a good model to work with initially because an algorithm in this model has a nice representation using combinatorial topology. Recall, to prove that k-set agreement is unsolvable using the extension-based proof, a prover must win against every algorithm. To show that there is no extension-based proof, for every prover, we adaptively construct an algorithm, based on what the prover does, and show that the prover loses against this partially specified adversarial algorithm. As well as making the algorithm seem weight-free and correct, we can't let the prover know that we are cheating. An outline of how this is done appears in our brief announcement in the proceedings. There is a full proof of this result for the NIIS model in our stock 2019 paper, and there is a full proof of this result for the NIS model in the most recent version of our paper which appears in Archive and on my web page. It would be interesting to show that extension-based proofs fail for k-set agreement in other models. It would also be interesting to show that extension-based proofs fail for other problems. Dan Alistar, Yoel Rubicki, and I have recently proved that there is no extension-based proof of the impossibility of cycle agreement in the NIIS model, which then led us to an impossibility proof using combinatorial topology. Thank you for watching this talk. I look forward to answering your questions during the conference.